He's like, oh, why are you acting like that? Why are you not going to answer my phone? You scared? You scared? Scared of what? What? Sir. Sir. Scared of what? What do I need to be scared of? my channel it's your girl Leah Lord here and I'm back at it again with another video <laughs> okay if you are new to my channel hey girl hey my name is Leah I make videos I do story times I do hauls I do a little bit of this a little bit of that so it's like for the kids you know the vibes and if you're a returning subscriber hey friend how are you I hope you're doing wonderful fabulous beautiful amazing so in today's video we have another story time story time Sundays story time Sundays period okay so i'm back with another story time and this story time i tried to record it two times before so hopefully it works because if not i'm done i'm over it i'm through done so um this story time is basically about the time that this guy that i was talking to he threatened me he threatened to expose me and i i wasn't having it at all anyway <clears throat> so this happened back in my spring semester of my freshman year of college if you watched my college roommate story time you know that in the fall semester like when i entered college i had a boyfriend my boyfriend and i broke up i just wasn't feeling it anymore so we broke up um and then after that this guy that i went to high school with we started talking we're gonna call this guy joe because he was a stalker okay we're gonna call him joe so um joe and i went to high school together and i went to a really small high school i went to a high school that is now closed the reason why i say it's a small high school is to say that everyone knew each other literally the high school was one floor only like we all knew each other we saw the same people every single day so um anytime somebody new will come it'll be like oh you shaking things up shaking the table somebody new um so joe was new at some point i think he came in during my I was it like junior year yeah i think he came in during my junior year so joe came in and um joe was messy joe was messy from the very beginning okay you could tell that he wasn't one of them new kids who came to school and he was just trying to fit in like he was here to stir the pot respectfully he was joe literally his name would be in everybody's mouth because he would always be in trouble with someone like literally he would start talking to girls or he would say that he was talking to girls and then word of mouth like it gets it gets around or whatever and then the girl would be like that never happened i never talked to you what are you talking about i never talked to you stop it keep my name out your mouth like all that you know brooklyn girl so Joe was literally always in stuff with other girls in our school. Like, older girls at that. Like, when, like I said, we were in my junior year. He would literally always get... No, it was sophomore year. I remember it was sophomore year because there was one, this one specific incident with this one girl who was a senior when we were sophomores. And I remember that. Yeah. So, we were sophomores when he entered the school. But that's neither here nor there. The point is that Joe was always getting into it with somebody. And he was just messy. He was, he was real messy. He was messy... But he was kind of cute to me. Like, at the time, I was like, mm, you look cute, you know what I'm saying? He was tall. He was dark. He was Jamaican. I spoke to y'all about Jamaicans before, and y'all will notice a pattern with me. But we're not going to get into that. Anyway, so he was Jamaican, and um, at first, like, he would only come around me when we were in my group of friends. So I had three other girls that I used to hang out with. I used to eat lunch with them. We used to go to um, the yard together during our lunch break, whatever. Like, I used to always hang out with those girls specifically. He would literally only come around me when I was around those girls. And so I was always like, what is this about? Like, are you embarrassed to be around me? Like, what's going on? Like, you don't want people to know that we're friends, we're cool. Like, what's this about? So I don't know if I ever confronted him about this, but I think um, initially at the beginning I was just like dealing with it because I really didn't like anyone in my high school. I had people I was cool with, but when I tell you like I was just ready to get out, I was ready to go. I was ready to get ASAP, okay? Basically, um, Joe would only be around my friends and I was fine because I was like, I really don't need to know you long term or nothing. But then Joe starts to flirt with me. Joe is like flirting with me a little bit implicitly but the thing is again he's hiding that he's flirting with me so it's like he's embarrassed to like like me or something and I was just like 
initially my first thought was that he's being messy because i knew that he was being messy with other girls in my school i thought he was gonna be try he was gonna try to be messy with me too which was confusing because i was literally minding my business in school like literally i told y'all my school was only one floor and everybody knew each other people knew me my name and people knew me by face and not by name that's how much i minded my business like i literally said nothing to anyone if you weren't in a class with me if you weren't friends of a friend of mine and i literally only had like four or five friends you would not know who i was you would see my face and be like that's the quiet girl that be walking around her business with her converse on that's me it's me so anyway um he used to like flirt with me and stuff like that and he used to do it when people weren't around like if we were in the staircase just hanging out because sometimes during lunch i would be in the staircase just sitting there because i really didn't want to be around anyone in the cafeteria so he would come and he would find me he would sit down and he would talk to me like something real innocent like nothing ever happened like literally he would just sit there and talk to me but he would flirt with me so um i think at some point i think during my senior year i had to tell him like yo like what is up with you like you flirt with me all the time, but then when other people come around, you act like it's not happening. Like, what is that about? He gonna tell me. I just don't want nobody in my business. That is the oldest excuse in a book. That is the oldest excuse in a book. I'm all for, like, you know, keeping your business on a hush-hush or whatever. But the way this man was moving, this wasn't a, I'm trying to keep my business to myself. This was a, I'm really not trying to let nobody know that I'm messing with you specifically, so... So I had to cut it because I remember telling Joe, like, listen, like, if you're not going to be like this with me in public, you're not going to be like this with me in private because I'm nobody secret, like, at all. So I just remember, like, I told him to stop flirting with me, stop talking to me when I'm by myself, just, like, leave me alone. So um, that happened, and then I went off to college. So fast forward now to the end of my fall semester when me and my boyfriend are broken up and um, Joe starts to talk to me on Facebook because I guess he was kind of peeping. I was posting, like, breakup stuff. It wasn't like subs for my ex. It wasn't subs for my ex because we broke up um, in a really positive way. Like we didn't have any animosity towards each other. So, but he could tell that I was sad. Anybody could tell that I was sad. So um, he hit me up and he was like, hey, how are you doing? How's college? How's Syracuse? All of that. So we start to talk on a daily basis now at this point. And um, I remember one day he was like, do you know this girl named Emily? And then he gave me her last name. And I was like, no, like, you know, I don't talk to nobody. I didn't come to college to talk to nobody neither. So I don't know her. He was like, oh, she's my friend, she's a junior, blah, 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 she's this major. And I'm like, why would you think I know this girl? Like, how many people are on this campus and you think I would know somebody, a junior, at that? He was like, oh, she looks like this, 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 that. And I'm like, I'm listening, but why are you telling me this? That doesn't, you know, I don't think too much about it until the next week. He goes... You were looking cute today. I said, pardon me? I know he was in New York, so I was like, what do you mean I was looking cute today? I didn't post no pictures. I didn't describe my outfit. I didn't, what do you mean I look cute today? He was like, oh, my friend Emily saw you. I was like, what do you mean your friend Emily saw me? Where did she see me? He was like, oh, she saw you on a quad um, next to um, the building that looked like a chapel. And I was just like, Cause now I'm paranoid. Y'all know I was stalked before. I said in my story time about me having a stalker, I was stalked before. So now I'm getting a little bit shaky and I'm like, oh no, not this again. Not you, not you. So he's like, um, he's like, yeah, she saw you and she was like describing you to me, this, that, and third. And I was like, yo, that's wild creepy. I'm not even gonna lie to you. Like that's super creepy. The fact that number one, you told your friend about me and you and I are not even dating seriously. Like we're just getting reacquainted. And number two, the fact that this girl took her time to literally watch me and describe me to you, like cut it, weird weird real weird so then um that stops he apologizes um we start talking again fast forward now to i want to say spring break yeah spring break if i remember correctly syracuse's spring break is like in april maybe about like the third week of april so um i went home for spring break because i wasn't trying to go nowhere i was a freshman not only that but like i just didn't want to travel anywhere so i went home for spring break um and i let him know that i was home and so he, he's like oh like link up with me so I did meet up with him. I met up with him where he worked. At the time, he worked at a hotel. Um, it's called a Club Quarters. There's, like, several different ones, so I'm not going to mention which one it is. But um, he worked at the Club Quarters. And so um, I met with him there, and we were just, like, talking a little bit, whatever. And then I went home. So I went home, 
and then we kept talking for the next like two days then he hits me up and he's like i want to see you so i'm like okay where at like do you want to come back to the hotel like what's because he worked at a hotel the club quarters is a hotel i think i just said that but yeah so i was like do you want me to come back to the hotel do you want me to come to the area like what's up like we going out what's going on so he's like oh just meet me at my house i'm off tomorrow i said your house and my whole thing is like let me tell y'all at this point we were talking but we weren't really like anything serious like i said we were just getting reacquainted with each other you know what i mean there was some flirting going on but definitely wasn't nothing too deep like why do you want me to come to your house for what 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 do you think is gonna happen like i don't understand so I had to tell him right then and there. I was like, you know nothing's going to happen, right? Like, you know that's not the type of time that I'm on. And he was like, yeah, I know. Don't worry about it. This, then, the third. Um, automatically, I had, like, a gut instinct telling me not to go. And I usually trust my gut. I'm like, listen, if I don't want to do something, I'm not going to do it because there's probably a good reason why I feel this way. I didn't want to tell Joe that I wasn't going to come because Joe was the type of person, even in high school, where he was just like, he always made fun of me. He was like, oh, you're a scaredy cat. Like, you're a little punk. Like, you don't do nothing. This, that this that and the third so like he would always like tease me so i really didn't want to give him another reason to do that so i was like you know what whatever i'm gonna go nothing's gonna happen so i tell him i was like send me your address we're talking at night at this point i want to say it's about like the evening time at this point like it's like evening time maybe around like five o'clock so we're talking and i'm texting him and at some point he stops to respond let's say he stops to respond at like 7 30 or something like that that wasn't odd for him because he worked like kind of a weird shift at work he was a chef at the hotel so he worked sometimes like evenings into the morning sometimes he worked in the afternoon like his shifts were never really consistent so for him to be asleep that early really wasn't odd in any way he fell asleep but before he fell asleep i had texted him and i was like send me your address so i know how to get there i'm going to the nail salon tomorrow so i need to know how to plan out my day no response he sleep cool next morning i wake up no response i was like all right maybe he's still asleep that's fine um i want to say i went to the nail salon at about like 11 30 because my nail salon opens at 10 and i was walking to the nail salon that day i walked to the nail salon because it's not that far it's maybe about like a 12 minute walk um and it was a nice day out like i said it was spring break so it was like getting a little bit warm it was warm enough for me to wear like a um a sleeveless top i remember i was wearing a white sleeveless top and some ripped jeans so i remember that um and my hair was in a bun because it always was in a bun back then but anyway so i remember i was walking to the um the nail salon and i got a pedicure and a manicure so as i was sitting in the pedicure the chair i'm like waiting for him to text me back i was almost done with my pedicure at this point and i get a text message back from him he's like oh hey sorry i fell asleep last night like what's up you still coming so i was like yeah but you never gave me the address so i know how to get there he was like oh my bad he sends me the address i'm like i really don't i don't i don't know where this street is i'm so sorry i, I don't i don't i'm the type of person i don't know where anything is like literally before i had an iphone i don't know how i got from point a to point b because i was just lost in the sauce okay period he's like this is the train you take this man gonna tell me to take the a c train the a c line I'm falling, falling. Yo, somebody was playing Fallen from um What's the name of that show? The show about the strippers in um Chuckalisa. Oh, girl. Anyway, they were playing that song. That's my song. But anyway, um, so basically he's telling me to take the AC line. If you're from Brooklyn, if you're from New York, if you're been here and you've been on the ac line you know that the ac line is the ghetto when i say the ghetto i mean the ghetto like i just it looks like those old trains from like back in the 70s the ones that you saw in like coming to america that's what it looked like a little bit it's definitely giving grimy it's giving you will get robbed at any time it don't matter what time it is we're robbing you on the train we're robbing you yes i was just like pardon you want me to take the what I was confused for several reasons number one i was just like 
you knew where I lived. I told you where I lived and you said that you had a train near me. And he was like, oh, well, if you take that train, you're going to have to do a little bit of a walk. And I know that you won't want to walk through that area because he had lived in East New York. Like, and I was just like, OK, cool. But um, how am I supposed to get to this train? Because from where I live, there is no AC train. There is no AC train. OK, for you to get to an AC train, you would have to take a taxi or another bus. I don't take the bus darling i don't take the bus so i was just like i don't know what you want me to tell you but you told me that the train that was near me was easy to get to your house so i understand what changed at this point so he was like listen like just trust me just take the train i cannot trust you i'm getting on the train by myself and you know the area you live in what are you talking about right now what and at this point i had wild anxiety like i didn't like going anywhere by myself i didn't like going anywhere new i didn't like going anywhere that was like a little bit dangerous i was just like not having that my anxiety mm, not happening so i was basically trying to explain to him i was like listen like i can't do this i'm so sorry but i cannot i cannot get on this line and this man got upset this man got upset he got upset like literally I did not see this coming, but he was literally wildin'. He was wildin'. Like, he was like, Oh, what do you mean you're not coming? Now this, now this. Why you play on me? You being so childish right now. Just get on the train. It's not that deep. I'm telling you how to get on the train. I'll be outside. He was saying he'll be outside, but a few text messages earlier, he was like, I'll be at my house. Just call me when you're outside. So not only did you want me to get on this grimy train, but you wanted me to walk from the train station to your house knowing damn well I didn't know where I was going. But anyway, so yeah, so I was just like, what are you talking about? This man is blacking on me. He's he's literally going off. And I was so confused. So I'm like, you're not going to talk to me like that, Joe. What is going on? Like, why are you so mad that I'm suddenly not coming to your house? Like, first of all, I don't owe you anything. I don't owe you anything. I'm not your girlfriend. So you've never done anything for me to feel like I owe you anything. Furthermore, I don't owe you the liberty of coming to your house. Not only coming to your house, but coming to your house on public transportation. If you was really about it, you would send a, cast, a taxi or a cab from my house to your house, okay? Because clearly I was uncomfortable. And that was my big thing. My big thing was he saw how uncomfortable I was. Clearly I was in distress from these text messages and I was just like, I cannot get on this train. Like my anxiety will not let me and he did not care he was only concerned with the fact that he wanted me to come over and seeing him act like that it just made me feel like why are you so pressed for me to come over you must think that something is gonna happen if you want me to come over so bad and baby boy is not as we talked about earlier nothing is gonna happen between us so why are you so mad that i'm not coming over seeing him act like that really just made me feel better I, I, it just confirmed that i was not supposed to go there the gut feeling that i had the night before that's what that was i don't know what was gonna happen if i went over there i'm not gonna say he was gonna do anything to me but the way he was acting he was being real real aggressive and i really didn't like that at some point i just stopped replying i just stopped replying i was like this there's nothing to say there's nothing to talk about so i stopped replying when i tell you this man called me 13 times he called me 13 times smacked me back to back to back to back to back at this point i'm sitting in my nail text chair and i'm getting my nails done and i'm just watching the phone ring and she's looking down and i'm like girl don't worry about it he's calling my phone i'm not answering after the 13th time he starts to text me back again he's like oh why are you acting like that why are you not gonna answer my phone you scared you scared scared of what what sir sir scared of what what do i need to be scared of he's <laughs> he's going off on me and then this man stops right he stops texting me he stops calling me for like maybe about like five minutes Five minutes later, I get a text message. Log on to Facebook in 10 minutes. I said, what's gonna happen in 10 minutes? I already know what time and he's on. I know what time and he's on because like I told y'all, this man was messy in high school. He was wild messy in high school. Like he would literally be like, I have pictures of so, so and so naked or so, so and so exposed or whatever the case is. So he would be like, he threatening to expose people. And I'm just like, I know I've sent you some provocative pictures of me, baby, but you are not doing anyone a disservice. Anyone a disservice by threatening me. So I had to let him know. I was like, listen, 
I know you're threatening me right now. I'm letting you know that number one, it's not gonna work on me because <laughs> it's not gonna work, baby. Number two, I look good. I look good. So you're not embarrassing me. And number three, I never sent you no naked pictures of me, so... And number four, if you think that you are going to post my pictures online as an act of revenge, I'm going to hit you so hard with a lawsuit. You can't, you wouldn't even be able to blink. What are you talking about right now? So I, had, I literally told him, I was like, listen, here's what's going to happen if you post any pictures of me on Facebook. Here, here is what's going to happen. And I said it in the most calm manner too because at this point I wasn't even scared. I was just like, bro, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Do what you got to do. Like, bust a move then, partner. Like, what's up? Like, and he never did anything because he was all talk. Of course he was all talk. So I block him and I do not speak to him again. And that was the last time we really spoke up until like a year after that. I remember a year after that, I was on vacation. I was in St. Lucia. And this man going to send me a text message talking about some happy new year. He was like, oh, I just wanted to say hi and see how you doing. Why is it that men always want to check up on you when they did you wrong? Like, what is that about? It's your guilt eating you alive. That's exactly what it is. And I don't need it. So I was like, listen, leave me alone. I don't need to talk to you. Don't ever contact me again. Seriously, I'm not going to forget what happened between us. Like, do not talk to me. So he was like, oh, wow, it's like that. That's crazy. All right, then I'll leave you alone. He was saying this in a manner that would make me feel bad for him. I did not feel bad for him. Not once. Not once. Did not feel sorry for him. So that was the end of me and Mr. Man. Like, he literally threatened me. Threatened to expose me. I don't know what he thought he was going to do, but it wasn't going to work. Because when you're God's favorite, like, things usually don't work out like that. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. So that is it in my story time. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked this video, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Talk to me in the comments. Talk to your girl. Hit up the kid. If you want to say anything else to me, if you have any suggestions, any comments, feedback, anything like that, don't be afraid to hit me up in my DMs. All my information for all my socials is down in the description box down below and in, in the outro. Um, once again, thank you guys so much for watching. I love you so much, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!